Hey, what I want to do is uh, make a video for you for the IOC. Okay, the IOC I know is a nerve marking experience. I have done it before, and uh, a lot of people think that it's very hard to do well in the IOC because you don't know what passage is going to show up, and you have to sort of improvise on the spot. You can't really study for it, and most people don't know how to study for it. But today in this video, I'm going to tell you the strategy how you can achieve predictable success for your IOC. Okay. So with this framework, you should be able to predict your success. Like if you put in the hours, you should be able to get a level seven if you follow this framework. Okay, and what, what, I'm going to teach you how to prepare for the hours. And not only that, I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you an example of how to analyze a passage in order to get a good mark for the IOC. Okay, and by the way, I'm personally I'm not an English literature expert, but I'm the founding partner of HKX and a lot of. Um, and our team at HKXL, we teach over 500 students every week from all around the world, mostly through the internet. And um, actually, um, I've consulted with the English experts at, at our team, and then they have given me this framework that I can teach to all of you uh, through YouTube, okay? So, um, let's begin. So, you know, for the IOC, mostly the most schools are going to basically give you some passages, right? So, for example, they give you 10 passages and the teacher will tell you, okay, one of these passages are going to show up for your IOC. Right? Most schools do that. If your school doesn't do that, maybe you can try to talk to your teacher and ask her, okay, can you give me like five or ten passages that are most likely, most important in this novel that are most likely to show up, right? After you know the passages, okay, what you need to do is you need to, the first step is you need to go through every passage, okay? Go through each passage and write a commentary. Right? It is, for most students, if you're not very strong in language, uh, it's better if you write a commentary and memorize the commentary. And then on the day of your IOC, all you need to do is just, you know, memorize the commentary and read it out loud, really, right? But a lot of students have a question. Okay, you know the IOC is supposed to be eight minutes. You're supposed to read, you're supposed to speak for eight minutes, but most students don't know uh, how many words. So how long? Like let's say you're writing a commentary, but you don't know how many words your commentary should be because you don't know how fast you speak. Well, so one thing you could do is calculate your word per minute. Okay. So basically, what you do is just how do you find your word per minute? All you have to do is just go on the internet, find a random passage, and read it out loud. Right? Read it out loud and time yourself. Time it for one minute. And after you read it out loud, just record yourself while you're reading. Let's say you give yourself one minute and then you record yourself for uh, one minute. Right, and then you listen back to your recording and you count how many words you spoke in one minute. So this is word per minute. So let's say your word per minute is 50, or let's, let's say 100, right? Let's say you have 100 words per minute, then that means that in eight minutes, just eight times 100, right? So you need 800 words. Okay, so what you need to do, if that were the case, is you need to write a 800 word commentary, okay, for each passage. Okay, but now you're probably asking, how do I write a good commentary, right? How that would translate into a good IOC. So I'm going to tell you that now. Okay, so I mean, uh, now let's get to straight to the point. For for your introduction, okay, so you know for the IOC it's eight minutes, right? So normally you will have one minute for your introduction, and then six minutes for body, and also uh, the final minute would be a conclusion. Okay, so let's talk about what to do for each of these parts, okay? For your introduction, it's normally a one minute long and you need to introduce the poem. So just say something like this poem, A, B, C, is written by the poet uh, D, uh, C, D, E, something like that, right? And then you can talk a bit about the author's background. Actually, this is part of the IB requirement, okay? IB state that for the IOC, you need to have a contextual understanding of the poem. So it really helps for you to talk about the author, just you need to do some, or the poet, rather. You need to do some background research to figure out, you know, what is the background of the poet, okay? And you also want to explain that, so you know, the best thing is you relate the poet's background to the poem he wrote, she wrote, he or she wrote, okay? Let's say this poem wrote a, this poet wrote a poem about suicide, and you can say, oh, this, this uh, poet suffered from great depression, which is, why she had the intention to write a poem about suicide, okay? And under what context? So, for example, you can say, yeah, she, she wrote it during the, the poet wrote this poem about suicide when she was middle-aged, when she was depressed, something like that, okay? So this really helps for you to show that you have a contextual understanding. Under what context was the poem written in? Okay, and then for your body, okay, 
So the, the way you do it is this, the way you, just now I mentioned, you write a commentary and then you memorize the commentary. When you write your commentary, you, first you start by annotating your poem. When you annotate the poem, you should look at these five aspects. The first structure, literary devices, any literary devices, like metaphor, simile, those. The theme of the poem, the setting of the poem, and the tone of the poem. Okay, after you select, after you annotate your poem according to these five aspects, you select three that are most important. Select three aspects that are most important. Okay, and then you you focus on talking about these three A, B, and C. You don't talk about anything else. Okay, because you know the the IOC is only eight minutes long. You can't talk about everything, so you just focus on three. Up, and then you also want to for each of the aspects, you need to have two at least two examples to, to back it up, and you need to explain the effects of those examples. Okay, and your conclusion, you just conclude uh, by um, basically summarizing what the author expressed in the poem, right, and the literary divide, and the, and the um, restate basically how A, B, and C helps to enhance the effects of the poem. Okay, but now let us move on to the next part because I know even just after I give you this concrete map, maybe a bit, it is a bit hard for you to understand how it actually works in real life. So I've selected a poem, Mirror by Sylvia Plath. Okay, so um, basically uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you how to annotate this poem and I'm going to teach you how to right, do an IOC on this po on this particular poem. I know a lot of IB students have this poem as one of the possible poems in their IOC. So hopefully after you see how I analyze this poem, you can understand how you can do it for your own. How to do an IOC on this poem called The Mirror by Sylvia Plath. Okay. So let's, basically this poem, the theme of this poem is, um, this poem takes place in a room, right, in Sylvia Plath's living room, and then the the narrative of this poem is a mirror. It's the mirror that is located in Sylvia Plath's room. And the theme of this poem is about aging. So it's talking about how every morning the mirror sees Sylvia Plath, right? And Sylvia Plath is very desperate and Sylvia Plath is aging every day and she is very concerned. Okay, this is basically the whole idea behind this poem, but let's look at it stanza by stanza. The first two lines, I'm silver and I'm excited. I have no preconceptions. I, whatever I see, I swallow immediately. So this is just talking, describing a mirror. Right, so a mirror is neutral and it reflects whatever um, the image is showing. Okay, just so that it is unmisted by love or dislike. So again, it's emphasizing the fact that the mirror is neutral. Now it is very truthful. Okay, the eye of little god four cornered. Okay, most of the time I meditate on the opposite wall. So it's talking about how the mirror. This is, is this is reinforcing the setting, right? So the mirror is located in a room every day. It, um, faces an opposite wall and it, and it is pink with speckles so with the fact that it is with speckles may indicate that the the, mirror, the, the wall is quite old it is aging okay, but it flickers okay so faces and darkness separate as over and over so this is this this poem this mirror has been in the room for a, an extended period of time right so it has went through many days and nights right so that's why the darkness separate the wall of the mirror over and over again. Now I have, so now he's um, describing himself as a lake. A woman bends over me. So this woman is basically Sylvia Plath, searching my, my reaches for what she really is. So Sylvia Plath is desperately looking at the mirror, trying to figure out, reaching into the mirror and see how she really looks like. Then she turned to those liars, the candles are the moon. I see her back and reflect it faithfully. So she turned to those liars. So you kind of get the sense that he's trying to look for people who are going to lie for her. She 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 turns the liars who tell Sylvia Plath that she's still still beautiful, right? So um and candles and moons, these things if you're under a candle and moon you look more beautiful than you actually is, right? So um so that's why I think this liars here refer to people liar the candle and moon refers to people who are going to, or refers to objects or people that are going to give her a false sense of beauty right give her a false sense of beauty okay so she rewards me with tears and agitation of hands so she this indicates how she is very emotional right about her aging process right she's very desperate okay so um it is i'm um, important to her she comes and goes so she looks at the mirror every day okay she she it shows he's very desperate. Each morning, it is her face that replaces the darkness. Okay, so every morning, 
she's in front of the mirror and she drowned a young girl so the young girl is being killed drowned in the river so it's forever gone and in me an old woman rises toward her day after day like a terrible fish so this again is a metaphor showing how she is aging okay so now let's focus uh, now let's look at um so as I mentioned so for the IOC you want to focus on three aspects and I think the three aspects that are most worth focusing on here are the themes, the metaphors, and the setting, okay? So of course this is open-ended, but this is just, for me, if I were doing this, this is what I'm gonna focus on. So let me show you what I got here. So the themes. So actually, let's start with the introduction. So for the introduction, actually, Sylvia Plath, if you do some research, actually, when during the period of time when she was um, writing this poem, she was going through a divorce, right? So, um, so this poem, therefore, is about how she's, afraid of losing her beauty and since she's going up through a period of divorce with her husband it suggests that she, Sylvia Plath wrote this poem because of her because she is worried and she is concerned that her husband is leaving her because of the fading beauty right so this is the context of how this when this poem was written yes yeah, so first but the first aspect is the theme right so this obviously the theme of this poem is aging okay the deeper theme is that Beauty and charm is temporary, right? And that as time passes, beauty and charm, youth is going to disappear. So it is very evident that the aging process is very evident that um, from the last few lines, right? So each morning it is her face that replaces me with darkness, and me drowns a young girl, and in me, a woman rises to her day after day. So this is basically about how, um, this is basically about how every day the uh, youth is fading every day this metaphor shows and also shows the frustration and the desperation that comes with aging okay so how do i know this well first it, is, it says that the the mirror states that the uh, sylvia plath is searching my reaches for what she really is so every day sylvia plath is in front of the mirror trying to figure out who she how she really looks like. she's very concerned about her appearance right and one more thing is um every day she rewards me with tears and agitation of hands. So it indicates that every day while um, while um, while she's looking at the mirror, she she is crying and she's very upset. Right? Okay, so this all shows indicates the um, the desperation that Sylvia Plath is facing and this contributes to the overall theme. Right? thing you can look at is the this metaphor and simile, right? So the metaphor that are used there are quite a few. First of all, it's, it uh, compares the mirror to a river, or compares the mirror to the river, and it basically says that the uh, the young girl is being drowned in, a, in the lake, right? So actually, this shows how this metaphor expresses the fact that youth uh, is killed and it's never going to return, right? Its youth will be gone and eternally, okay? So, another metaphor that was used is by comparing the, the old woman to a terrible fish. So what does the terrible fish sort of con connotates? So, it, it indicates some sort of, it indicates weakness, it indicates usefulness, and it indicates uh, like ugly appearance, right? So, um, it connotes the uh, how Sylvia Plath uh, dislikes um, aging, right? So another metaphor that was used is here. So searching my riches for what she really is, then she turns to li those liars, the candles, or the moons. Okay, so liars, candles, or the moons. Candles and moons basically, as I mentioned, now improve the appearance of 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 a, of a woman, right? Anybody who stands under a candle or moon will look better than she actually is so it is kind of so this metaphor shows how um, Sylvia Plath is searching for spiritual comfort she's trying to search for ways to conceal her her aging process she's trying to search for ways to enhance her appearance appearance okay but those are lies okay she and she knows that these um, things that like candles and moon that enhance her appearance are actually lies so even though she can conceal the aging process, she can't hide it. The thing we can cover is the setting, right? So basically the setting, uh, you can say it takes place in the living room with mirror, okay? So, and then it, it, 
the time frame of this poem is for a long period of time, over many days, right? Because every day it says that the, um, here it says that the face replaces darkness, right? So it takes place over a long time frame, okay? So, and, um, yeah, so the faces and darkness separate over and over again. And furthermore, it takes place in, the, in an old room. So this also gives you a sense that the poem takes place over an extended period of time. And using this, this setting um, is very instrumental to the, um, to, the, to the theme of the poem, right? It's, it indicates that a, a lot of time has passed, right? So um, there's a very convincing setting to what the poem is trying to poet is trying to deliver, right? Okay, so this basically you can focus on these three sections and in the end, in your conclusion, all you need to do is just, you know, uh, sum it up. So you can say this poem, in, in conclusion, this poem is about these themes and using these, these metaphors to, um, to, um, to express the concerns about aging, right? And, and the setting is very important, very important to take note of. Okay, the, author, the poet has, um, placed a lot of emphasis on developing a setting that um, matches with the theme of the poem, something like that, right? Okay, so I hope you found this IA session useful, uh, IOC session useful, okay? So you can register for a free trial on our, uh, in the link below, and you can get a free IA or free IOC samples if you want, okay? So thank you very much.